G'day and welcome to a quick walkthrough of itch for your first class. So go ahead and go to teach.itchcode.com and we'll walk you through how to get your students in and the first project maybe uh, you might want to start with. So we have a set of uh, classes or grade bands on the left here so you can kind of pick where you want to go to. Um, if you want to get your students in uh, you can set their uh, link that they would go to off of this teacher ID here. So if you put this link on your library page, uh, they can get to it pretty easily. And then we want to make sure we add some students before we point them at that so that they can actually get to it. So I can click add student there and I might put in uh, some of my students, um, Mary Jane maybe, and username uh, or email. So if you do an email address, they don't need to put in your teacher ID. Uh, if you use a username, they will. So let's go ahead and just do that so that you can see how it works. I'm going to just make up a, a username for this person and save it. So now it's added that person to my academy and I'll save that password so I can use it easily. Um, I've added that person to my academy. I'm going to um, open this up and copy the link. And they've also been added to any classes that I've turned on. So I haven't turned any classes on yet, so I'm just going to jump over and go straight to the student. So I'm going to do a new incognito window. So I've gone to an incognito window, which lets me log in as someone else. So I'm going to put in that uh, link and you can see that automatically fills in the teacher ID for them. So now I put in um, their username and password, sign in, and they will see any kind of courses that I currently had activated. Let's go back and turn another one on. So I'm going to say, third grade, pick the first class, and I want to show that to my students. So I turn that on, and once that's done, I can go back to the other uh, project. If I'm Mary now, I can refresh my page, or if I logged in um, again, I would get that activity. So then uh, she can go in and start work on it. So enter, and I'm going to go through and do this, so you can skip ahead if you are familiar with Scratch, but uh, we're going to start a new project. Um, as the student and it lets you start with a template or a set of blocks to work from in the beginning. So this course has a set of blocks and the scratch cat here. So I'm going to open up the lessons and the student can kind of pick where they want to go to in the lessons because they can get an introduction um, about scratch or they can jump straight to the 10 block activity and they can move this around wherever they like. Uh, to follow along with directions. If you're teaching at the front of the class, you might not need this. Um, and you can also print this out uh, from the uh, course as well. And I'll show you that in a second too. So they can come in and rearrange these blocks. So there's a starting block and I might want to uh, reset things back to the default at the start. So set, remove the uh, size and color effect, attach the repeat block. And I'm just sort of dumping these in wherever here, and then I wait, and then each time in this loop of 10 times, I'm going to change the size, change the color effect. I want to put that inside there, and I might switch costume uh, inside here, maybe back to cat two. So now if I hit go, you can see my cat kind of like getting bigger, moving. Um, it's not turning back and forth, so I might want to add another weight block in between these so I can see it tip back and forth. There you go. So that's a, a project that this student might have finished and then they can maybe give it a name and I call it Tippy Cat <laughs> or something and then they can uh, make sure they've saved it. We save every 30 seconds uh, around about so if they forget to save it'll save uh, most of what they've done if they haven't changed anything before they close the window. And then they can go here when they're on the project page and they can submit that for grading. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. We make a copy of their project so that you can grade uh, their finished work and they can keep working on it if they want to. So you can see that project's pending grading right now. I go back to the teacher view. I can now go into this course, the 10 block course, and I'll show you a couple other things here. You can look at the teacher page of information. 
So you can download the planning worksheet for the students or download the learning experience document. The icon with the red line through it here indicates that it's only viewable by a teacher. So if I go as a student, I won't see these uh, items. So we didn't see those when we were the student. So from here, you can also use the rubric if you like. We have a rubric on most of the activities. And so you can grade their projects off of our rubrics if you want to. And so now if I click back to the actual activity, I can go to my teacher settings and look at submitted projects. And so these submissions, I can see there's a couple that are not graded. I want to grade the Tippy Cat project. So it'll let me open it up along with any other uh, student projects in this same space. So all the students will see each other's work and I can go and, uh, and uh, grade that and say, love the tippy. And you can actually give them a real grade of uh, a number there as well, but you can put anything you like in that and that'll show up then for the student on their project when they uh, look at it. So I'm back to the student project and they will be able to see their grade for their project that you've put in. You can also see what it's been um, reworked from. So that's the current project that they might still be working on. And now if I go back to the teacher view, I'll see here that there's uh, some more progress by that students. I can see um, all of the students in this activity, 67% of them have submitted projects. I can look at the details of that, see who has actually submitted and who hasn't. And I can also look at their lesson progress. So then you can just kind of move on with whichever one you want. You can turn them on and take a look and uh, turn them off, uh, depending on what you like. Uh, there are some more advanced projects for higher grades. Uh, there's like a course here, Games for Change, which has a 30 hour course. Um, but you might want to just progress through them at the grade level of your students and see how they go. Enjoy.